Hello and welcome to a video tutorial of Niche Genetics. In this video we're going to be looking at LSI keywords and maybe some of the other modules as well. So I've actually searched for the keyword SEO and coming down on the actual summary page I'm going to head over to the to um, the LSI keywords and view the full report. Now I'm going to actually sort all of these keywords, each one of these um, columns, so that I don't have any empty spaces. Now LSI stands for Latent Semantic Indexing and Latent stands for Hidden and it's like Google being able to understand the hidden meaning by reading between the lines of your content. Now what happens here guys is Google is working with languages of course and what it does it groups keywords together. So keywords that it believes belong to a certain family um, and LSI keywords and what you see here is the kind of family um, for your main keyword. So let's say for example we wanted to rank for SEO and we had a look at the competition and we thought okay we're happy with the competition and I want to go and I want to rank for the keyword SEO. So what we do now is we'll actually come over to the LSI page. Um, now your search might not have as many LSI keywords as um, SEO has. Um, so I'm using SEO as an, as an example because it's got some good um, LSI keywords. But if yours doesn't, guys, then don't worry too much because obviously the niche genetic system works based on the top 10 ranking sites, cross-references the contents together, and then picks out common words which form your LSI keywords. So if you don't see many combinations, then don't worry too much. Try and cover what you can cover. And if you see any keywords that are out of place, like privacy policy um, or home page or things like that, then just let us know and we'll get them removed and added to our ignore list. And our ignore list is getting built up all the time. So um, as time goes on, the LSI keywords list will get will become even more precise as well. Um, so anyway, let's have a look at this. If if for example, let's say for example, sorry, you was to go over to Google and search for the keyword SEO, the content that you come across, you would actually expect to find these kind of keywords in that content. I'm going to read some of them out to you so, you so that you can follow along. So if you searched for something for SEO and you found a piece of content, you'd expect these kind of words to be used. Search, SEO, engine, image, Google, local engines, web, tools, pages, Bing, results, content, and I'm sure you agree, guys. And two word phrases, we've got search engines, search engines, search results, engines Google, engine optimization, Google Bing, webmaster tools, updates Google, social media, search marketing, ranking factors, <clears throat> And I'm sure, again, guys, you agree with me. Um, and three keyword phrases, you've got search engine optimization, you've got search engine rankings, you've got, um, I don't know, engine optimization SEO. Um, and then for four keyword phrases, you've got like things like search engine optimization SEO, search engines Google and Bing. So as you can see, guys, you would expect to find these kind of keywords on any page that was ranking for the keyword SEO. And the reason behind it is because this is what SEO is all about. These keywords here is what builds up that main keyword. Um, and by using these keywords in our content, we can be sure that we're leaving nothing to chance um, and we're telling Google exactly um, what our content should be ranked for, even if it reads between the lines or if it reads our headings that are fully optimized to rank for our keywords Google is going to know what our websites are about and it's gonna be giving us a massive relevancy factor for actually being shown up there for the top 10 results okay let's head back over to the summary page and have a look at some of the other areas as well now I'm hoping a lot of these areas are going to be self-explanatory and you know exactly how to put these to use um, but I'm just going to pick out some of the other areas as well so related terms guides um, related terms is what Google actually tells us when we go to Google and we type in the keyword SEO for example let me go here and let me show you what I'm saying Okay, so I've typed in SEO and towards the bottom, Google actually gives us some related topics. So this is what Google is associating with our main keyword. And Niche Genetics does this for you by giving you all of the data. Um, where are we? Okay, just here. Okay, so it's giving you the data just there. And what you can do from here is explore other areas of your niche. So for example, just typing in SEO will explore that area of SEO. Typing in something like SEO company will take you down a whole new route to explore the whole SEO company area as well. Um, so it just shows you what relates with your main keyword. Okay, let's go down a little bit further on and have a look down here. Um, obviously, you know about competitors and <clears throat> you know about paid competitors as well. We've done a video, a separate video on them. Um, and so I'm not going to be covering this here. Um, the tags, guys. Now, the tags here 
are when niche genetics goes and visits the top 10 ranking sites in Google, um, it actually goes and scrapes all of their meta keywords. So these keywords here are keywords that sites are using inside of the meta, meta keyword section. Um, sometimes you might not find very relevant ones here, but what you will find down here are keywords that are actually being used by the top 10 sites that are ranking on page one of Google. Now, even though meta keywords aren't very important nowadays, um, and Google might even you know turn a blind eye to them and not even crawl them, um, it's still an area for us to go and scrape and see if we can pick out any of these sites that are actually you know using these keywords okay you've got your ad copies here as well guys these are ads that um, niche genetics finds on google so for example you've got these ads here um, and this is exactly what niche genetics shows you um, just here in these ad campaigns okay categories now categories Categories are excellent, especially if you're working with a silo structure. It also allows you to figure out and drill down into other areas of your niche as well. Now, some of these, um, um, uh, we should actually name these categories groups and group ideas um, so that you can actually group your keywords all together, but they do pick out and you can pick out some really cool categories here as well. I mean, you might find that the keyword on its own, SEO, um, affordable SEO, for example, um, might be searched for quite a few times. And if you work with silo sites, then this could be used as one of your primary silo pages with a number of helper topics um, being put out there to actually bring that up as well but coming up and down and having a look at the category section will actually give you some good um, categories that you can actually or potentially work with on your own websites um, so do have a look at these as well Okay, let's go back over to the summary page and let's have a look at some other areas. You've got suggestions as well, guys. These are other potential keyword ideas that you can start targeting. It's always a good idea to have a look at the suggestions, run them through the Google Keyword Planner and try and pick out any potential um, suggestions that actually have good keyword searches associated with them as well on a monthly basis. And of course, how to topics and questions, guys, especially after the latest Google Hummingbird update, whereby Google tries to understand the relationship of queries in a given sentence or, or or the relationship between words in a given query um, then questions have become and how to topics have become much more important I mean I mean with Google trying and striving to understand natural spoken English sorry natural spoken words um, and sentences um, then this is exactly how you're gonna find your customers are typing into the search engines they're gonna be typing things like does SEO actually work does SEO exist uh, exists sorry does SEO cost money um, or things like you, you know how to write an article for SEO um, and these are the kind of covers and topics that you can actually cover down here but another area why these are very important as well it gives you a very good understanding of what's happening in your niche what kind of questions are being asked about your niche um, and what kind of topics are being covered by experts um, on how to topics Okay, and of course you've got Google Trends, and Google Trends will show you the rising trends and um, the hot trends, um, and you can use these to find new niches or new breaking ideas um, or breaking rising trends as well. Um, and then of course, if you've got the Enterprise Extreme Edition, you've got eBay, ClickBank, and Amazon products as well, which allows you to see if there's any products being sold in your niche, if there are, um, sorry, if there's any products being sold in your niche, how much they're being sold for, um, and it just gives you a quick indication on, you know what, there's loads of products being found on Clickbank, Amazon and eBay. Well, I'm happy with like, for example, the competition, I'm happy with everything else and it looks like it's gonna be a profitable niche. So this is a winning niche for me. And then you can dig down even deeper if you wanted to and find the actual products that you want to monetize on your own blogs by going into eBay Associates program or Amazon Associates program or um, Clickbank's um, affiliates program. Anyway, guys, so this is how you use niche genetics or some of the other areas inside of niche genetics. Um, in the other videos, we've already covered how you can work with the difficulty scoring, how you can work with long tail keywords, um, how you could analyze and work with your competitors as well. And in this video, we've just quickly covered how you can work with LSI keywords, tags, related terms and everything as well. So with niche genetics, it shows you two areas. It shows you areas on how to optimize your own sites, what kind of keywords, LSI terms you can use. And it also shows you what kind of authority you're gonna be up against so that you can quickly evaluate how difficult or easy it's going to be to rank for your keywords in Google, Yahoo or Bing. So thank you very much, guys and I hope you enjoy working with Nishanet.